Hello everyone, this is Enea Mustafarai from Civil Engineering Department of Epoch University. This webinar is entitled Structural Assessment of Historical Constructions and Selected Retrofitting Techniques in the Framework of K-Force Project Special Mobility Strand. The content of the presentation is as follows. There will be a short introduction, the main reasons for strengthening, what are the main e-commerce recommendations, inspection and assessment procedure, some case studies, finite element modeling and results, condition assessment results, and some of the basis of it. Masonry is one of the oldest materials used in construction of civil buildings. Masonry structures were built in the past based on master knowledge and experience, when neither scientific research nor design standards were applied. Many buildings' current structural conditions do not satisfy the present guidelines. Natural disasters, aggressive environment and human intervention have caused extensive damage to these structures, many of which have been built with no consideration of these factors. In this figure you could see three examples of stone masonry, brick masonry and... Old is a relative term. In practice, it defines a structure between 50 to 100 years old, whereas for ancient constructions a building is considered to be historic if a few centuries have passed since the time it was built. Some examples of historic constructions are Egyptian Pyramid, Lion Gate, Parthenon of Athens, Colosseum, Pont du Gard, Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, Notre Dame de Paris and Florence Cathedral, etc. Some of the main advantages of using masonry as a construction material are low material costs, good sound and heat insulation, locally availability, aesthetics and simplicity of construction. This technique, consisting of assembling of bricks, stone or block units on top of each other, laid dry or bonded with mortar, is essentially the same related problems. However, during their lifetime, historical structures have suffered extensive damage due to natural disasters, aggressive... Some of the main reasons for strengthening are to eliminate structural problems or distresses due to unusual loading and exposure conditions, inadequate design or poor construction practices. These problems could be caused by overload, fire, flooding, foundation settlement, deterioration or possible earthquakes. Moreover, some other reasons are to correct design or construction errors, to resist exceptional or accidental loadings, and to increase tensile, shear, flexural or compressive strength of structural members. Environment and human Analysis of historical constructions is a very challenging task due to several uncertainties regarding mechanical properties and geometrical characteristics of the structure. Each masonry building is unique. Thus, it should be treated with a special care. In this figure, we can see the main facade of a mosque and the corresponding finite element model in Analysis of Historical Construction A correct structural analysis of the building requires a deep knowledge of building history and evolution, geometry, structural details, material properties, cracking pattern and masonry construction technique. In this figure you could see the point cloud after laser scanning of a mosque. Methodology The assessment of current structural conditions is based on visual symptoms and finite element model analysis. The main objective was to improve the existing capacity for static and possible earthquake loads, as well as to understand possible causes of the problems. In this flowchart it is presented the steps while doing the assessment. After visual inspection, if there is any doubt of safety, a detailed investigation should be carried out. If the level of safety is sufficient, routine maintenance should be done, otherwise a detailed structural analysis is to be carried out. Depending on the level of safety, if the level of safety is high, local strengthening methods should be suggested, otherwise material properties by non-destructive tests should be defined. Then a finite element modeling analysis is to be carried out and at the end global strengthening methods should be suggested. The International Scientific Committee for Analysis and Restoration of Structures of Architectural Heritage presented a package of guidelines for conservation and restoration of historic structures. These guidelines were approved during Second International Congress of Architects and Technicians of Historic Monuments in Venice in Italy in 
25th to 31st of May 1964. According to these recommendations, no action should be taken without a proper evaluation of the benefits and harm that can be done to the structure. Diagnosis should be based on qualitative and quantitative analysis. The remedial measures should address root causes rather than symptoms, and each intervention should be kept at minimum. The inspection and assessment procedures followed in this presentation is done as follows. Adaptation of a suitable inspection form, which contains general details about the structure, the address, the rough area, number of stories, the total height, etc. Type of the roof, construction materials, and the conditions of load-bearing walls. The severity level ranges from none, which contains no structural damage, to light, moderate, severe, to near collapse, which indicates a heavy damage element or structure. Based on the current state, recommendation is given whether to retrofit, demolish or conduct a further, more detailed analysis. This is the inspection form which contains the case study for this webinar are five mosques which are located in Albania, which were built during the Ottoman period in uh, SEP 2000. The geometrical data for this mosque were obtained using a calibrated high-resolution digital camera, which is an Nikon D90, a 3D intelligent laser ranging and imaging system, and a Topcon GPT-3007 total station. In this figure you could see the interior of the dome and the laser scanner, as well as the point cloud after laser scanning process. In this slide, we can see the scan views of the structure from different scan stations. The structure is the Nazaretia's Mosque, which is located in Elbasan. The main facade, which is the comparison between old and present day, and the cross-section detail of the mosque is shown in this slide. Regarding the possible failure mechanism, this figure shows from A to L the possible failing mechanisms such as vertical overturning, overturning with one side wing, two side wings, corner failure, partial overturning, vertical strip overturning and so on. Regarding finite element modeling, the model consisted of 9604 joints and 9563 shell elements. The materials modeled are brick and stone. Macro modeling technique was used, so masonry units and mortar layers are represented as a continuum. Homogeneous linear elastic behavior of the structure was assumed. The assumed material properties are presented in this table. And in the figure you could see the finite element model in SEP 2000. The idealization of the geometry is carried out as we mentioned earlier, the unit of mortar and brick and interface are represented as a continuum, as a single element. After the condition assessment results, we could present the summary of the results in this figure, where we could see the vegetation growth, the damaged tiles, the damaged minaret, damaged plint, local loss of stone unit, deterioration of surface plaster and the absence of the drainage system. Moreover, some of the main visible cracks which are found on the main facade are highlighted with a white color. Regarding the condition assessment of Murat Beg's mosque, which is located in Kruja, here we could see some photos of the current condition of the walls, the plaster layer, the tiles, the improper isolation of the roof, the moisture concentration, the deterioration of surface plaster, as well as the damage of the timber elements. In this figure, we could see the assessment result from Mirahor Irlias Beg mosques in Korcha, where we could see some visible cracks inside of the dome and outside in the load bearing walls, as well as broken windows, a location of moisture spots as well as deterioration of surface plaster. The assessment results of Mosque of Preza are presented in this figure, where we could see deep cracks on the load-bearing walls, as well as improper isolation of the roof, 
the concentration of moisture around the stone walls, damage of timber elements, and deterioration of surface plaster. Regarding the assessment results of the Leiden Mosque, which is found in the city of Berat, here are represented the main cracks, which extend from the dome to the pendentives and through the windows, as well as we have the damaged windows, moisture concentration, local loss of stone units, as well as deterioration of surface plaster. Moreover, the soil profile under this mosque has been investigated by carrying out four different boreholes and uh, the characteristic layers are represented in this figure. In this figure we could see the crack propagation from the dome till the load-bearing walls and uh, the cracks are found to be due to differential settlement. In this figure we could see the deformation of the structure at the south and in this figure we could see the S22 stress distribution and actual cracks seen on the facade of the Nazareshas mosque. We could make a comparison between the concentration of the stress values from the finite element modeling software as well as the actual cracks which are found in the mosque. Some of the strengthening techniques for unreinforced masonry historical structures are local reconstruction or kuchis kuchi technique, injection, tying, external and internal pre-stressing ring and fiber reinforced polymer materials. The basis of intervention design is divided in two main parts for the walls and for the dome. Regarding the load-bearing walls, additional tensile and shear resisting elements should be added where necessary and injection should be applied where the voids are seen. In the areas where no structural cracks less than 10 mm wide are found, then injection technique should be used. The structural shear and tensile cracks near the opening should be repaired with longitudinal FRP bars bonded with epoxy resin. Local reconstruction kuchi kuchi technique is suggested to be used in the places where sending phenomenon is seen and where massive loss of building units is observed. Injection technique consists of injecting into the voids a binder which is generally an epoxy resin or a cement based grout of hydraulic lime mortar that would produce a better connection between the units. As you can see in this figure, there are some previously drilled holes that are filled with this injection mix. In this figure you could see the application of the injection. The workers are injecting a mix of hydraulic lime mortar into the previously drilled holes. The local reconstruction kuchi kuchi technique consists of removing the broken and missing masonry parts and replacing them with new ones having the same properties. As you can see in this figure, in the right side we have the removal of the broken uh, units and uh, replacing them with new ones. The internal and external pre-stressing rings consist of adding a circumferential stainless steel ring around the structural members that exhibit high concentration of tensile loads. Basically, this is done at the bottom of the dome where uh, the concentrations of stresses are high and this uh, ring would increase the stiffness of the structure. FRP materials are fiber reinforced polymer composite materials made of continuous polymer and reinforcing fibers. They increase out of plane flexural strength, in plane shear strength, and stiffness at service loads. They also could change the behavior of masonry from weak and brittle to strong and ductile. In this figure, we could see FRP laminate, sheets, and bars. This text material was adopted from the Handbook of Research on Seismic Assessment and Rehabilitation of Historic Structures as well as Assessment of Historical Structures, a case study from five Ottoman mosques in Albania. I would like to thank you for your attention.